the end of last week and over the weekend, there has been this terrible unfolding tragedy in Japan. First of all, the earthquake and tsunami, and then the difficulties with their nuclear reactors. I have quite a personal interest in this because I went to Sendai six years ago. I was joint organizer of a UK-Japan workshop, which was held in Sendai, which is just about here. And so we have friends there, and very happily, they're all OK. But we've had several messages from viewers, several from Japan, asking us about nuclear reactors, why do you need boron, why do you need iodine? So I thought it'd be worth telling you a bit about it. Let's begin by explaining what happens inside a nuclear reactor. Inside nuclear reactor, you have uranium. You can imagine this as an atom of uranium. And uranium is radioactive. And if a uranium atom is hit by a neutron, it can split into two. So one uranium atom splits into two other atoms, which are smaller. And in fact, the masses of these two, when you add them together, is slightly less than the mass of the uranium. And the difference in mass between the start and the product is the energy. And mass can be converted into energy by this very famous equation of Einstein, E equals mc squared. And even if you lose only a little bit of mass, it's a huge amount of energy. So not only do you form the two products, you also produce another neutron, or, uh, or sometimes more than one neutron. And these neutrons can go on and cause further uranium atoms to react. If you have uranium by itself, this reaction just builds up and builds up, and you have an atomic bomb. But in a nuclear reactor, you control the flow of neutrons so the uranium splits, or so-called undergoes fission. Fission is just another word for splitting, at a rate that gives you energy you want. And you pump water through the reactor to generate steam, and the steam generates your electricity, which is the purpose of having a nuclear reactor. Now, the way they control the reactors is by having control rods which are lowered into the reactor. The uranium is usually in the form of a powder inside the tube made out of zirconium. And between the tubes are holes which you can raise and lower the control rods. And the control rods contain boron, which absorb the neutrons. If all the control rods are in, then the nuclear reaction stops because all the neutrons, or nearly all the neutrons, are absorbed. So as soon as the earthquake happened, I presume, in went the boron rods, and the reactor stopped reacting. So why can you ask, didn't it cool down? Why did you need to keep it cooling if the reaction has stopped? And the answer is that the bits that are formed, the nuclear fragments, are themselves radioactive, some of them very highly radioactive, and they go on decaying and giving out energy spontaneously. They don't need neutrons to set them off. And it is this decay that produces more heat. And this is the problem that you face having to cool the reactor for several days afterwards. In fact, you have to go on cooling spent um, nuclear fuel for years until it's absolutely cold. But the danger period for a reactor, I believe, is just a few days. Now, this brings us on to why you might have explosions. Many modern nuclear reactors have water round the rods. And the first thing is that as you heat up the water, as more and more heat comes out of the um, rods, the water generates steam, and the steam generates pressure. And if it gets too hot, the whole thing can just pop through 
a pressure of steam. However, zirconium, the outer cladding of the um, nuclear fuel rods, can react with water when it gets to high temperature, perhaps 1500 degrees centigrade. Zirconium plus H2O goes to zirconium oxide plus hydrogen. And hydrogen gives a higher pressure than steam. And also, of course, hydrogen plus oxygen can explode. You've all seen explosions, probably on our video. And you get a much bigger bang if you pressurize a whole nuclear power station with hydrogen than you will from a small balloon. Some of you may have heard that because of the emergency, they're using seawater to cool the reactor rather than the ordinary deionized water, the pure water that they use. And you will have read people saying, well, then that's the end of the reactor. They can't use it anymore. And the reason for this, I believe, is nothing to do with the fact that it's a nuclear power station, but merely that the chloride from the sodium chloride, the salt in seawater, can attack stainless steel and other metal components at high temperature and weaken them in such a way that you can never be sure that it's going to be safe afterwards. It causes cracks through the, the steel, which are not obvious, but which, when they're pressurized, could give way at any moment. Now, the other question that was asked by one of our Japanese um, viewers, and I think some of the others, is what is the iodine tablets that people are talking about? Well, some of the fission products that you get from the reactions are a radioactive form of iodine, iodine-131, the isotope that has mass 131. And <coughs> if people absorb iodine 131, it can get into their thyroid gland. And then when it decays by emission of an electron, these can damage the cells and cause radiation sickness. But this is very specifically occurs in the thyroid gland, which concentrates iodine in the body. So if you give somebody potassium iodide tablets beforehand, their body takes in the iodine, and so the thyroid gland is saturated. It can't absorb any more iodine, so the radioactive iodine just passes through the body with doing relatively little damage. So the final point is with so much destroyed, why are the people worrying about the nuclear reactors? And the answer is that if the radioactivity gets distributed in the environment, it's very difficult to clean up. And if people absorb it, it can then cause health problems for years and years to come. So every effort must be made to contain these things, because while they're contained, they're much easier to deal with. So finally, I should say that all our thoughts are with our colleagues and friends and everyone else in Japan, and we hope that things will get back to normal as soon as possible, and you have our best wishes from all of us.